All right, today I've got a very strange story for you guys. I'm not quite sure what I just uncovered, but it's kind of freaking me out, so I figured I'd just share it here. Today we're going to be looking at a series of Reddit posts that go from now all the way back until like 2008. There's not a lot of interaction with this at all. I just kind of stumbled on it. And as usual, I encourage you to go grab a snack, get comfortable, and maybe shut off the lights because this is kind of a creepy one. So this whole thing began about 14 years ago on March 24th, 2008 with a Reddit post by user option command delete in the Long Island subreddit. Hi all, was walking through the Bridgewater Cemetery in Valley Hill, Long Island a few weeks ago when I came across this inscription above this crypt or mausoleum or what have you. Anywho, I was curious so I snapped this pic of it and thought I'd translate it later. Well, I kind of forgot about it until just now when I was offloading everything from my camera. I plugged it into an online translator and... The user then links to two images, one which the link is broken now but I assume it was probably the actual picture of the inscription, and the second is a translation from Google Translate, and... <laughs> wow. So apparently it was written in Latin, and the translation actually comes out to the soul of the wicked, which is just obviously a very strange thing to have above someone's grave. Anyways, that's the first time that this was ever mentioned on Reddit, let alone the entire internet. But then we fast forward to 2013, and that's when shit gets really weird. On the 7th of August, user IamNotAVegan94 made a post to r slash no sleep titled Stairs to Hell. He writes the following. Alright y'all, this felt like the right place to share. There's a cemetery like a mile or so from my house that I like to walk in from time to time. You get all these strange thoughts when you walk through cemeteries, just about life, death, time, etc. If you haven't walked through one alone, I highly recommend it. That isn't what this post is about though. In a sort of barren area of the cemetery, I found a tomb with the door clearly unlatched. No name or anything on it, just a weird quote in some other language. I'm just a stupid American, so I don't know what it said at the time. I eventually found out, but we'll get to that later. I pushed the door open a bit, and inside was literally this almost endless looking staircase. It looks like it was dug out by a f***ing caveman. The stairs are just made of dirt. The inside of the door was covered in termites or something eating right through the wood, and a bunch of other bugs. Anyways, it was weird, but I got a picture of the outside and continued on my walk. When I got home, I fell asleep and woke up thinking about it, remembering the little quote I saw. So I typed it into Google, and I actually found that someone else already posted about this exact same spot, like five years ago. And he found out that it actually says the soul of the wicked. WTF. Posting this here for now, but tomorrow I am definitely going back. I need to know what's in there. Updates to follow. But he'd never leave that update, and in fact, his entire account went dormant right after that. Now this is very strange looking back at his account, because he actually used to be like a daily user of the site. He used to post almost every single day. In predictable internet fashion, everybody immediately assumed that Not A Vegan was dead. One guy said, well, he had a good run, RIP. And that was really it. I mean, the post went dormant right after that, and it only got like a couple upvotes, you know what I mean? Nobody really saw this. until five months later. After all that time, somebody else finally came back and actually left a comment on this post. In before anyone says this post is dead, I know. This is really meant as a warning for anyone who happens to stumble upon this post. So I don't really know how to prove this to anyone right now, but this is OP's older brother. I have no idea how to properly put what I need to say into words, so I'm sorry if it's a bit all over the place. I'm kind of frazzled at the moment. First of all, his name is Kevin. I don't feel like calling him by his Reddit name. I see all the comments with people proposing ideas about what happened to him. No, this wasn't a publicity stunt or attention seeking. Kevin went missing a fair amount of time ago. I haven't gotten around to going through his old accounts other than the ones his family knows about, like his Facebook. But just a couple of hours ago, I was going through his browser history. Kind of fucked up, I know, but you do weird shit when you lose someone like your brother. Say what you want. I ended up seeing that he used Reddit. I did some digging, found his accounts, and just started looking through his posts. Helplessly looking for clues or any sort of red flags or anything, I guess. It was more of a comfort thing, though. I didn't expect to actually find anything. And then I found this post. I'm literally shaking as I write this. He fucking made the original thread the day before he went missing. I have no idea what to think right now, but it's freaking me the fuck out. Listen, I don't know why I'm even posting this. I guess I was just going to say to stay away from the cemetery, but that doesn't even make any sense. I still don't even know what happened. Whatever. Sorry again, I know this is all over the place. I drove out there immediately after I found the post. The cemetery's pretty close to our house, but the cemetery was already closed. I broke down in the car and considered jumping over the fence to get inside, but that's stupid. So I just got back home, but I'm going back tomorrow to try and figure out where this crypt or whatever is. I don't know what to think. 
I'm worried someone was living in there or something. There are a ton of druggies in the area I live, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if someone made a little home for themselves in there. That was all he posted. Um, yeah, kind of a weird turn there, but I'll be honest, like a lot of you guys, I was definitely a little bit skeptical here. So I did a little bit of digging, and I looked back at Valley Hill missing persons report and like Kevin on Google and it took me a minute but I actually found this kid really did go missing. I'm gonna black out his last name because I don't know if they want that public. So there's some info on him here. I mean I'm not I don't want to like dox this guy or his family or anything but this yeah. Kevin's brother then makes an update post to the self subreddit. I probably should just keep this to myself but I suppose it's too late for that. Couldn't sleep at all last night. I'm sure some of you have lost someone close to you, but it's impossible to describe how it feels without any kind of closure. Like, in the worst way, in the most terrible f***ed up way, you almost wish they were dead. Just so you knew for a fact what happened to them, it's so much worse to not know. You try to like, take a good guess as to what their last moments were like, but then you remember that you don't know that they're dead. So there's just this constant endless void of uncertainty in your stomach. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Anyways, I must have been asleep for at least a half hour or something because I remember being jolted awake at 5.30. I assume that was by his alarm. I got up, didn't eat or anything, and drove right to the cemetery and waited for them to open the front gate at 6. I drove inside, parked in the parking lot, and just started wandering around. I'm glad he posted that picture of the door so I at least knew what the hell I was looking for. It still took me like three hours to find the fucking door. The cemetery is huge. Eventually I started coming up to similar mausoleums built into the side of a hill, and I was certain I was close, and that's when I finally found the same one from the picture. Same inscription and everything. I really didn't know what to think, I just kind of stood there and felt like an idiot because nothing looked weird about the grave, and in all honesty, whatever happened to Kev probably took place before he even got here. I didn't even know what I was expecting. Obviously. I knew I had to go inside. I pushed on the door, and just like he said it would, it propped open, but only a couple of inches, and I couldn't really get myself inside. He was even skinnier than I was, and from his original post on this thread, it doesn't sound like he could even get in. I didn't care though, I was gonna get in there if it killed me, so I squeezed my fat ass through there, and ended up kind of breaking the door. It didn't really seem like it was a big deal either way though, that door must have been at least a hundred years old, and it didn't take much force to bend and snap it back. There were all these roly polies and ants inside that came crawling out. I got a bunch of wood dust in my mouth too from when I broke the wood. It took me like at least five minutes to get inside. It was a pretty small entranceway, and something was behind the door, so I only had this tiny little area to crawl through. Eventually I got myself in. I was blocking the only source of light from behind me, so I turned on my phone flashlight. I saw those same stairs that he saw, and suddenly was shocked to my bones. It really did seem like a stairway to hell. Like, the stairs just kept going. Down and down and down. So I started walking. It turns out the stairs actually do stop pretty quickly. It's just so damn dark in there that you can't see that, especially if you're just looking from the outside. I'm also not sure if you can tell from the pictures, but this area was very small. My shoulders were brushing up against the sides of the walls here, and it was extremely claustrophobic. You know, like that feeling where you're afraid you might not be able to squeeze enough to turn back around and get out. That's when I found the most terrifying part of this whole ordeal. At the end of the staircase, there was just, like, this cave. It just dropped out into this horrific, gaping hole. I snapped this picture of it. Honestly, I tried flashing my light and looking at it without getting too close, but this hole went deep, guys. There were pebbles and other bits of rock in there, so I kicked some stuff down and... I don't know. I definitely stumbled upon a cave or something here because I heard those rocks bouncing around every second or so for, I swear, at least like 8 seconds. I don't know a lot about freefall acceleration, but if there's any physics majors out there reading this, any guesses as to how deep that could make this cave or sinkhole or whatever the hell this is? I wish I could give a more accurate measurement, but you've got to remember, I came here because of the possibility to answer a single question. And to my horror, I had found my answer. I couldn't bring myself to stay in there any longer. It was terrifying, claustrophobic, and I was certain my brother died in that exact hole. So I slowly turned around, luckily, climbed out, and had a terribly emotional drive home. I called my dad, waking him up. I was a total wreck, and I told him everything that had just happened and what I had found. By the time I had arrived home, he told me he already called the investigator we had been in contact with for the last few months assigned with Kev's case. Much love to him. He immediately contacted the cemetery and was back out there with us within the hour with another cop. 
One of the cemetery administrators showed up with us too. I don't remember if he was like the owner of the place, but it doesn't really matter. Either way, that guy was pretty pissed at me for damaging the door, which, okay, I get it, but at the same time, he seemed to have like zero sympathy at all. Whatever, that was the least of my worries. He said that basically the organization running the cemetery now had actually adopted it many years ago, and that they didn't have any information of many of the graves there, including this one. He estimated that it had likely been sealed there since the early 1700s. The cemetery guy was just a real pisshead though, like he took absolutely no accountability for the neglect of the cemetery to refuse to reseal the door after it came open. He just stood there sipping on his coffee like we'd intruded on his morning or something. I guess we probably did, but Jesus Christ, man. Either way, I wasn't there to hold grudges or anything, I just wanted closure. I showed them the stairs, which you could now see from the outside without moving the remains of the door much at all. Immediately, more cops were called onto the scene, as well as a cave search and rescue team which had to be called in from out of town. I really wasn't keeping track by that point, I just let the cops and my dad handle the specifics. I was just completely drained from my lack of sleep the previous night. It took them some time to remove the door and dig out this pile of dirt and stone that sat right behind it. After that, they hooked up a bunch of pulleys and lines, and this one girl dropped down into the cave or whatever the hell it was. They really didn't know. They said this kind of stuff isn't normal at all in our area, and that's why the SIR team had to be called in from out of town. Looking back, I wish I had paid more attention to that part, but I was honestly drifting off to sleep in the grass like 20 feet away from the workers, with my dad sitting in a chair the police had brought wrapped in a blanket. It was a cold morning. I do remember them talking about running out of line, and they had to pull the girl who dropped down back up after a little while. She was visibly disturbed after crawling back out from the hole. I guess they'd hooked up a longer line after that, and this time a guy rappelled down. They still didn't get to the bottom of this fucking cave, guys. Eventually, the investigator told us it would be best if we went home. These things usually take some time, and this was quickly turning into a fairly tricky operation. The second he had any new information, anything at all, he'd call us and let us know. Right around then, it became apparent that something was not right. He would call my dad with little bits of info throughout that morning, but as time went on, we stopped hearing from him altogether. I was getting kind of restless, and my dad and I got into a little fight about whether or not I should go back and see what they had found. I ended up driving over there anyways, but my dad stayed back home sitting at the kitchen table. Maybe I shouldn't have left him there by himself in the state he was in, but I needed to figure out what happened to Kevin or I was going to implode. It was exactly like it had been a year ago, but this time even worse, because there was the possibility that he had the most horrifying death imaginable. I needed to know what happened. By the time I got to the cemetery again, I was just completely blown away by how big of a deal this had turned into. The cemetery gates were closed again, with cop cars and black police vans all keeping everyone besides authorized parties out. They didn't even let me in! I tried explaining to them who I was, and I gave them the name of the investigator, but he told me I had to turn back. So that's how this morning went. This post is getting huge, but I don't care. I'm only writing this to put it on paper and to give myself something to focus on, because I really don't want to just go home and sit in silence with Dad. I've been sitting here for the last few hours in the public library writing this. I feel guilty for leaving my dad, so I'm going to go home now. I'll let you guys know what happens in one last update post when I have more info. So the few people that were following this story were leaving their comments on everything, but one user in particular, Tandrick, left a pretty horrifying reply. Hey man, I'm not a physics major, but there are pretty basic formulas you can use to calculate how far an object has fallen based on how long it was in the air. And if you aren't exaggerating about still being able to hear that rock falling 8 seconds in, that would make that pit at least 800 feet deep. 8 seconds of freefall comes out to about 1,030 feet, but because it was bouncing around on the walls, it probably slowed down a bit, so I'm guessing it's at least 800 feet deep, depending on your sense of time. Don't mean to make this worse for you, but you said you wanted closure. Damn man, 800 feet at least? I mean, that's like... That's insanely far, man. Another user replied to this comment as well. Uh, I'm calling bullshit. Google it. The deepest vertical pit in the United States is the Fantastic Pit in Georgia, and that's a 586 foot drop. Now I did some basic research. I just googled it. And this is true, the farthest pit that we've seen, just a straight vertical drop, in the United States is the Fantastic Pit at 586 feet. Now to give some perspective, here's a video of somebody dropping a rock down the Fantastic Pit from the top all the way to the bottom. It's fucking scary. There's no floor. Let's see what it does. Rock! Two years later, Kevin's brother returns to Reddit.
Hi guys, I guess it was kind of a dick move on my end to just leave this open-ended, especially after all that talk about closure. A few days after we called in the search and rescue team and they shut down the cemetery with cops and other guys, we got a knock at the door. It was the same investigator who had been talking with us about this for the last year, and what he essentially told us was that they were going to be closing the case and ending the search operation. They were confident beyond a reasonable doubt that Kevin had suffered an accidental death by falling down into the cave. My dad was obviously torn to pieces, especially when they told him that they weren't going to be able to recover his body, because it simply wasn't safe to rappel all the way down to the bottom. He explained that we had stumbled upon, quote, quite the anomaly, and that they were going to be sealing off the cave from the public. Although that was some pretty hard news, and left a lot of mystery to the whole thing, we accepted that it probably was what happened to Kevin, and we did our best to move on with him in our thoughts. But it doesn't end there. I tried to go back to the cemetery a couple of days after we heard the news about the case, but it was still blocked off from the public. Inside there were like 30 plus unmarked white vans of all different kinds, and I swear to god, there were dudes walking around in FBI jackets. I thought that was intense, and I just assumed that the cemetery was being investigated or whatever for being reckless. I didn't really think about it too much. It's now October of 2016, and the cemetery has become unrecognizable. It all happened extremely fast, but like half the cemetery, specifically the part of it that surrounded the cave, was bought out by some company called DS8T or something like that, and they literally relocated all of these historic graves. And we're talking like literally hundreds and hundreds of graves over to the other side of the cemetery in a pretty haphazard way. They bought all these cheap gravestones for them and they just completely destroyed these sites that were literally hundreds of years old. I don't know why, but nobody seems to be saying anything about it. I'd have thought that the families of the people who were buried there would have said something about this blatant disrespect of the dead, but nothing. Radio silence from everyone. The immediate area that the grave was at is surrounded by this huge white water storage tank now. I'll attach a picture of it here that I took a few weeks ago while I was looking at the area. I'm not sure if I should even be posting this because something about this whole thing feels very strange. This will be my last post on the matter. I don't want to think about this anymore, and honestly, I need to move on. It's been years now since this consumed my life, and I just need to move on. I'm tired of thinking about this. Again, because of the size of this post, and because it's been so long since the original loan was made, nobody's here looking at this anymore, not that anybody really ever was. Um, but one comment was left that was very weird. DS8T? Are you sure it wasn't ds and Look it up, OP. If that's what it is, that's not a private company. So yeah, um, making a very quick search again on Google, ds and is literally one of the main components of the CIA. ds and stands for the Directorate of Science and Technology, and they've been responsible for some crazy shit throughout the years, like Projects Bluebird, Artichoke, and MKUltra. They also develop spy satellites and other crazy stuff, like the name suggests. Now, why would the federal government, especially organizations like the CIA and the FBI, be so involved with this project and so obsessed with this pit? I mean, clearly that's why they're coming to this area. There's no other reason why they would be there. And, I mean, just to, to have the CIA and these guys pull up, like, literally a gravesite of hundreds of people, apparently, just so that they can set up an operation there for some reason is extremely, extremely fishy. I don't know, this whole thing is just really crazy. I don't, I don't really know what to think. Except that I do know what to think. I know exactly what's going on at the Valley Hills Bridgewater Cemetery. Absolutely nothing. Because I wrote that entire fucking story. I made it all up. Nobody named Kevin ever lived. There was no missing person. This whole Reddit post was just fucking inspect element on an HTML document. And I took all those pictures of those graves. That cemetery is in my neighborhood. <laughs> now wait, hear me out. I didn't do this to trick you. I did this for a reason. Now, I fucking love writing stories. I've been writing fictional stories since I was a little kid. And it's just, it's always been my passion and like, my two big goals in life have always been to write novels and to make YouTube videos. And recently I thought, what if I kind of did both? Both of those things at the same time. And honestly, I think that's what we should do. I think that's what I want to do moving forward because honestly, like, stories don't have to be real to be entertaining. Fictional stories can be awesome and nobody's doing them on YouTube. Very few channels do. At least ones that admit that they do. A lot of the channels that you think post real stories are probably all just fake ones. 
So that's why I'm making this video, because I want to prove to people that fictional storytelling can be interesting, and we don't have to lie about it. It can be fun. So before I made this video, I actually made a fictional story, and it was about an arsonist who, like, burns down a house and, like, all this crazy stuff. Um, but it was really good. I really liked writing that story, and if you write it well and you really get into the nitty-gritty of it, it does feel real, and it almost doesn't matter if it's real or not. If you know that it's fictional, it's just like reading a book, you know? I guess my point here is I want to ask you guys to give me a chance. I know that this was a bit of a weird video, but going forward, I'm going to be posting some fictional stories, and I'm going to be writing some new things, and they're all going to be original, they're all going to be coming out of my head, um, and I just want you to give it a shot. I want you to see what you think about fictional storytelling on YouTube. Um, I really think that doing that is is sort of what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, I don't know how to explain it, I don't know that I really believe in destiny or anything, but these are my two big skills, these are my two big passions, I love this stuff, and I think this is where the channel's headed. So please give me a shot, let me know what you think about these stories, uh, maybe check out the arsonist one, I'll leave it in one of the cards up there. It'll also be at the end screen at the end. And yeah, guys, finally, um, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. I cannot believe that, man. I've never had 10,000 subscribers before. It's just weird because my childhood dream has always been to hit 100,000 subscribers. Just 100,000. And we're, like, almost there. I mean, not almost there, but you know what I mean. Like, the hard part is almost over. Like, we've gained an audience and we're building this community and it's, it's working. And I don't know. It's just, it's weird, man. So again, thank you so much for all the support, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you like my future stories. Um, let me know. Again, if you're interested, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and uh, thanks again, guys. I don't even know how, I don't know how to end videos. Ah!